What lies in the darkness of the deeper dark? Two tangle blue horns on each side of a huge head. Its ribs ripped out of his skin. This Iman's figure you are now seeing is none other than the Warden. Blind, and yet he can destroy you. Beware not to walk on the skulk sensors, or else it's time to say goodbye. Ever since the 1.17 update was announced, we have been longing to finally meet the Warden. But we actually never got the chance. Do you know what? How about we meet him now? Welcome to 100 Days of Better Minecraft Hardcore, where loads of opportunities open up for you. Brand new dimensions like the Everbright with its frosty plains and scary monsters, as well as the Everdawn with its insects ready to suck the life out of you. But also its friendly and adorable mobs. In this video, we will head down to the deeper dark and face the Warden, as well as caring for eggs to hatch dragons. Quick note, just before we start, if you guys are interested in maybe seeing my builds or tutorials, you can check out my Instagram, at TootsieYT. Day one. Well, Minecraft sure does look a little bit nicer than usual. The very first animal I saw was this peacock, but I had to kill him because I had no idea how hard better Minecraft was and if I needed a lot of food or not. But as I was in hardcore, I was not going to take any chances. I quickly noticed that there were loads of different cow colors, but I had to kill them once again just to be sure I would have enough food. I then spotted some flowers that let out a lovely little effect, probably some seeds blowing in the wind. So I picked them up because I was definitely going to use them around my base. When the night came along, I picked up an apple from a tree and then went underground to be nice and safe from monsters. I found a bit of coal and soon enough, I arrived in a cave. It was very dark, so I lit it up with some torches and that's when I found my first iron. But disappointment struck when I realized I did not have enough wood to make a shield. I then noticed this strange green goblin that was actually selling me things for some reason and following me everywhere. And when that creeper exploded, he was still there, right next to me. I then defeated this zombie that was actually concealing a vein of iron. On day two, I headed back to the surface, followed by the goblin trader, of course. I was finally able to make myself a shield as well as an iron axe. I then decided to trade with the goblin to get a few emeralds. And to be honest, after that, I killed him. It was just to see if he would drop anything. <laughs> But yeah, poor little goblin, may he rest in peace. It was raining heavily and I really did not know where to go and I found this huge cliff with some water pouring down and so I somehow decided to climb to the top and of course there was nothing. So I made my way back down on the other side and arrived in a spooky swamp, so I was just hoping nothing would attack me. I was delighted to find a villager campsite. I actually got attacked by this zombie, so I piled up and slept at the top of a little cobblestone tower, and the next day I was able to safely loot all the chests, and trust me, there was some very, very good loot. There was actually diamonds, so yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh, and I also put on these armor goggles just for the fun of it, even though they didn't protect me that much. I spotted this strange structure in the distance and I expect it was just the strange well, so I returned to the campsite for the night. With all the iron I had collected, I was able to make myself some iron armor. In the plains, I spotted this huge mushroom, as well as a strange man called the Gatekeeper, and I had no clue what he was all about, but yeah, that guy was in the plane. <laughs> and no idea why, but witches love that mushroom. Further off, I was surprised by some hunter illagers and that guy with the sword. I know he was made out of wood, but he did hurt a little bit. So yeah, thankfully I killed them both super easily and they dropped some pork chops for some reason. And I also spotted that rainbow sheep. So yeah, that was pretty funny. 
I entered the hunter's house and was delighted to find plenty of steak and apples. Near a mysterious tower, I found a cute little house. It was all broken up, so I carefully made my way in and had a look about through the barrels and actually slept there. On day five, I decided I would go explore the mysterious tower and it said it was called a battle tower, so that was a bit worrying. And I quickly understood what it was all about. Basically, there are spawners at each level. So yeah, you've got to be careful with the monsters. And then you could actually get some loot in some chests. So yeah, I was really quite motivated. I went to the second level, which was zombies. And of course, I lit up the spawners. And then this Vex just came out of nowhere and I threw myself out the window because guys, I hate vexes, okay? Me and vexes know this cannot happen. I calmly ended up the day by looting a villager campsite with three more diamonds, which was epic. On day six, I had a rude awakening. I was burnt by a zombie. Nevertheless, I came back to my senses and I actually bought back two sheep. May I introduce you to Thomas the Rainbow Sheep and Gail the White Sheep. I had gotten this treasure map from the towers, so I decided to go on a quest to find the treasure. I made my way through the mangrove roots and then through some kind of cherry blossom forest and there I found a proper dirt hut. I was truly impressed with all the detail in the surrounding fauna and flora. After looting an abandoned portal, I actually found a campsite and began my looting over there. I suddenly spotted this strange slabfish and I clearly didn't know what to do, so of course I killed him just to see what he would drop and I really regretted it because you could actually take them in a bucket and he would have made an awesome pet. On day eight, I spotted these strange cows. They were just yellow with some flowers on their back. So I killed them to see what they dropped, of course. <laughs> I then spotted the exact same house I'd moved into, but with orange leaves. After looting it, I actually found this village and I found it was super funny because horses kept escaping from their enclosure. It was just a terrible enclosure. And by the end of the day, I was delighted to find a little platypus and I of course got a bucket just for him. On a more spooky note, I also found this huge Japanese temple with some terrifying monsters in it. So basically on day nine, I mined through the wall and it was just spiders. So I thought it was all right. And then this huge man spider ran after me and it was actually a wither skeleton in disguise. So yeah, I was out of there in no time. I arrived in a very cold place because I was actually breathing water vapor out of my mouth. I met Damien, a friendly fisherman who of course told me I could, you know, look through the barrels and take whatever I needed. I then spotted this yak and tried attacking him as I do with everything new when I want to know what they drop and all his friends attack me so yeah I left them alone. On day 10 I found this pillager campsite and guess what it wasn't just pillagers there were actually some vindicators so trust me I was not going near that place. I was delighted to find a cute little dirt hut for the night and I really really wanted to make myself a backpack to be able to transport all the loot you get throughout the game. I needed some more strings so I went outside to fight some mobs and this zombie almost killed me. Like his sword did so much damage it freaked me out. I managed to kill him but after that I just couldn't go back out you know so yeah I didn't have any strings so I had to kill a cat. Sorry cat lovers. It was my only way because I knew I would be getting a lot of loot from the buried treasure. I soon realized that the buried treasure was right in the middle of the Illager campsite. So of course I made my way underground and that is when I realized that the map was not a typical treasure map. It was an Illager campsite map. So yeah, very smart Tootsie. On day 12, I actually spotted this skeleton horse who had stayed on the grave of his humans and I thought that was super cute. 
And of course I looted the grave. <laughs> Further off, I uncovered this sort of spider den filled with cobwebs. So I could have gotten my string from there, but I hadn't found it at the time. On day 13, I went back to see Thomas and Gail and decided that I would actually live in that little house so of course i repaired it a little bit and i introduced boo my platypus to the boys on day 14 i decided to start bringing back a few cows to my place and i also went back to the tent i'd slept in on day two because i'd left some of my items in a chest including a diamond so it was quite important and i also found this underground little village place i also bought back loads of cows from the villager campsite because there were actually some white ones and I thought they looked quite unique. By the end of day 15 I found these angry pillagers and killed them and immediately drank some milk to remove the effect because I did not want to have a sudden raid happening. On day 16 I woke up and saw that I had escaped, barely escaped, a blood moon where basically there's like loads of monsters spawning so I was quite happy. I also killed this armored pillager who had like a cool little helmet on his head and then I realized that the blood moon had arrived and there was no way of escaping it because you cannot sleep. I shockingly discovered that some of the zombies could actually climb so he had like climbed on top of my house then jumped back down so yeah that was not very reassuring. On day 17 I finally realized that there was actually a waystone at the very top of the tower right next to me which meant that I could travel super easily from place to place. I also looted all the chests I had forgotten and mined the gold. With some name tags I had found, I was delighted to be able to name my platypus Boo and Thomas my rainbow sheep. I then set back out into the wilderness to find maybe some new structures or villages. I spotted this lonely house in a field which was actually a forge so I actually exchanged all my armor to like some brand new ones and I also was able to mine some iron. I then spotted this strange rocky structure and it was actually nothing. On day 19 I saw this awesome looking black pig but it was so annoying that I couldn't bring him back. And then I also killed some hunters and looted their house. I once again found an incredible structure, but I knew that I would die in two seconds if I went in. On day 20, I found this awesome looking purple forest. So of course I took some of the saplings and the flowers to decorate my base. I also looted a sunken ship and that's when I heard some villagers. So once again I found this sort of underground village compound. On day 21 I was relaxing, swimming about and I saw a crocodile. I freaked out, I escaped just in time to kill him. In a cherry forest I found some adorable pandas and there was that guy just twirling around. It was pretty funny. On day 22, I traveled once again to some very high and cold lands. Up there, I uncovered once again a battle tower and I made my way up, fighting off the skeletons and the zombies who wanted me dead. And then I arrived at the top level, my favorite level, and there was this vex that freaked me out, but he just went outside through the wall and never came back. So thank you, vex. <laughs> In one of the chests, there was a dragon egg. I was exhilarated. I just could not wait to get my own baby dragon. I've gotten loads of sort of sticky flowers, so I put them around my base so that maybe monsters would get stuck in them. I also decided to tame a horse that I named Logan, and I also bought back some pigeons and some peacocks just to have a little bit more company in the house. On day 23, Logan and I found a second rainbow sheep, so I was so happy that Thomas would finally have a friend just like him, and I was also able to name Gail with a name tag. I named the two female peacocks Silver and Grey, and the three pigeons would be Barry, Robin, and Maurice, the three Bee Gees, of course. I soon went back to the Frosty Highlands and found once again a villager campsite, that I looted, of course, <laughs> 
and then I found this beautiful red oak sort of forest, or should I say plains, with loads of incredible flowers, so trust me, I got plenty. And I also got some blue spruce saplings. On day 25, I made my way over to this lonely villager house and I accidentally hit Rosie, sorry Rosie, when suddenly I came across a pillager campsite and this vindicator came out of nowhere and almost killed me. I was left with only half a heart. This was terrifying, okay? This, I would have died on day 25 and had to start everything over again, imagine. Oh well, I survived for some reason and I spotted this strange whale and just went to say hi. And then in a portal chest, I found some glistening passion fruit or something. And as passion fruit is my favorite fruit of all time, I of course took them for no reason. <laughs> I then found this fishing hut with some strange fish zombies. <laughs> but thankfully they weren't hard to kill, but all I could find was fish, so yeah. A bit boring. On day 26, I found this pirate ship and some deers, and I suddenly realized I had actually thrown my diamond axe into the water, so I had to make all my way back to find it. I then returned back to see the deers, which were really adorable, and I also found a villager compound. And at the end of the day, terror struck when these sort of dragons or something just spawned above me so I hid in a hole in the ground and then the next day they just disappeared so I have no clue what they were so if anybody knows please tell me in the comments because I really would love to know what they actually were. At the end of the day I actually came across an invisible skeleton that was super hard to kill so yeah not very good. I spent the night in a villager compound to be nice and safe and saw these reindeer llamas, which were so cool. And then I made my way up a battle tower and clearly almost died because that skeleton had like a power three effect or strength effect. So yeah, that was a little bit terrifying, but I somehow made my way to the top and was able to make it back to Castle Martyr, which was my base. I of course started planting all the saplings and plants I had collected during my travels. I was so happy to find my little family back at my place. And then I actually decided to open the quest book and I realized that one of the quests was to make it to the deeper dark dimension, which was where the warden was. So I made my way down there, but every single sound freaked me out. So I just took the rewards, which was a pickaxe and some XP, and I just went back up because the sounds were so scary. And by the way, the levels stopped working for some reason in the deeper dark, so I had to kill a sheep to get them back activated. On day 32, I continued my explorations through this awesome desert, and I would like hit these little balls or something, and I could get some items from them, which was pretty cool. And I also found, once again, a cemetery full of graves that I looted. It's a bit weird, but we're in Minecraft, so it's okay. That night basically was a sort of lucky night, so I have no clue what I was supposed to do. I just went to see that villager, tried to trade with him, but yeah, I wasn't actually really lucky. On day 33, I found another battle tower with another dragon egg, which was so cool, and I made my way to the top to get an extra waystone. After finding once again a village, I saw these adorable raccoons who were just begging for food so I would give them some steak and they would just eat it and come back for more. So yeah, I had to continue on my way and I made my way up another battle tower to once again get a waystone because they were really practical, you know, you could just teleport from one place to another. On day 35, I was astonished to find this colorful mushroom village. I had no clue what it was. And then suddenly, a mix between a mushroom cow and a piglin came out of nowhere, <laughs> riding a cow some of them were. So yeah, that was a bit strange. <laughs> On day 36, I found this sort of rainforest with some carnivorous plants in it, which was really cool. And if you managed to kill them, you could actually get seeds of your own. So I decided to kill as many as I could, like that I could plant them around my base to protect myself from zombies. 
so apparently you had to feed them some meat. Um, and I would feed them some meat, but the thing was, I barely planted them, so yeah, they couldn't eat the meat, so I would just throw meat at them for no reason. I realized it was now time for me to get some dragons. So I placed the eggs high up in the sky because apparently other dragons only hatch above level 170, so that is what I did. I felt adventurous and so I made my way down to the deeper dark and that's when I found the warden. I was really terrified because I just didn't know that monster. I didn't know if the warden could suddenly teleport behind me, so yeah, it was pretty scary. And I also ran out of arrows, so I had to make my way back up. And I found this strange thing called a great skulker. <laughs> I had no idea what it was, but it was really, really nice and cute. Just didn't do much. And hidden in the rock, I found this sort of little room. So I looted the chest. I wasn't sure what it was, actually. I was then finally able to feed my little baby Foliath that I named Philip. I dug up plenty of gravel to get some flint and this zombie climbed up and <laughs> did give me quite a fright. But then I was able to light up my nether portal. I then went back up to my dragon egg and made a little room around it so that nothing would attack it because clearly I did not know if anything could attack it or not. I saw a lovely forest perched on a hill and I thought it should be time for me to make my very own house, you know, because I was living in a house that was already there. So I decided to do a Japanese themed house because the trees actually looked like cherry blossom trees, which are quite typical um, in Japan. So yeah, I just had to try it out. And it's actually my very first Japanese built I've ever done in my life. Um, I actually used this white wood for the roof um, out of mangrove wood. To stay in the light tones, I of course made the walls out of birch, but I did make a spruce floor that would fit with the oak pillars. And here is the result of Tootsie's very first Japanese house. Now a cool thing in Better Minecraft is that you can actually make proper tables, proper chairs, so that was so cool, so I decorated the house with all this new furniture. I also made some shelves and you could actually place items directly on the shelves, so that was pretty cool. From days 53 to 55, I decided I would stay up next to the dragon egg, you know, to make sure it would hatch and I realized you actually had to right click it. <laughs> So yeah, that wasn't very smart. So of course I looked it up and basically you can tame the dragons with some fish. So first of all, I made the platform larger and I did a bit of fishing and look who was born. Finally, a baby dragon that I named Azure, which means blue in French. That night I couldn't sleep due to a blood moon, so I did a bit of fishing and Aer, my second dragon, was born. I suddenly saw that a witch was throwing potions at Philip and I realized he was gone. My poor steak-loving Philip was gone. I straight away went back to the rainforest and killed off some more foliaths and called them Philips, of course. So I went to find loads of Philips and at one point I found that a Philip had been killing so many villagers. Like <laughs> there was actually a shield and a sword next to it. So that was pretty funny. And then I planted the Philips around my base. I then found the bag of a wandering trader and I was able to get its contents. To bring a bit of life to my Japanese house, I brought over Boo as well as a little pigeon. After taming my dragons, I realized that they still had to grow quite a bit for me to put a saddle on them. So I did quite a bit of fishing, you know, to make them grow faster. And I even went to kill some fish in a coral reef. I then thought I saw a fishing hut, but it was actually just a structure that was being constructed. So yeah, but never mind. On day 61, I entered the nether, but I actually spawned on an island surrounded by ghasts and lava. So I clearly couldn't do anything. So I just went back out and that was it. I wanted to bring one of my peacocks up to the Japanese house 
And how should I say it? It was a little bit tricky. On day 62, I went back traveling and found another one of these weird piglin mushroom villages. I don't know how you would call them. Um, but this time I decided to kill off some of the piglins for a bit of fun. On day 63, I found exactly the same house as I'd been living in, so that was really touching. And then I found a gatekeeper, but this time I traded with him. And I realized I could now go to two different dimensions, the ever bright and the ever dawn. I wanted to buy something to lit the portals with, so I tried to find the gatekeeper by removing the grass that was around me and I actually hit him. And he was really angry and hit me with a bow, so hmm. <laughs> so of course I made my way back home after that. On day 64, I remembered that there was actually a gatekeeper near my house, so I took Logan and we rode over to buy the Zeal Lighter. I lit the two portals and they made a special sound and I thought that was so exciting. Finally, on day 65, I was able to saddle up the dragons and I flew off into the open. It was absolutely an incredible moment and Vanilla Minecraft, please, one day maybe add this feature um because it's truly incredible to be able to fly on a dragon during the next two days i decided i would pop in to the ever bright dimension so first of all i saw these big woolly bulls so i thought it was a better idea not to approach them and then i opened the book that would basically describe all the different mobs. And some mobs were so scary. Like, if you cross their paths, you were dead. So, yeah, that was a little bit scary. And I decided to attack this ice zombie with my pickaxe because that's what the book said, that you should hit it with a pickaxe. So, it didn't really drop anything interesting. And then suddenly I saw the creature that, you know, you could not outrun and that would kill you. So, yeah. I was back into the overworld. But straight away, my curious mind had to enter the Ever Dawn dimension. And this was a dimension with mainly reptilians as well as insects. And I knew that immediately because this Nyctofly Nick Nick fly kept attacking me. Oh my God. And it really did a lot of damage. So it was super annoying. But quickly I found the technique, basically you have to hide in a tight space and the night toe fly cannot get to you. So basically there were some ants, some spiders, some crystal camels, there were loads of weird things. And one of them was this poisonous spider that could spit at you from a distance. And it was really pretty annoying. I then discovered an incredible mob. Basically, it's called, I think, a Krog or something. It's so cute. So, of course, I had to tame one and I named him Grog. <laughs> and I mean, how cool is it to travel by bouncing everywhere? <laughs> But of course, this was too good to be true. This poisonous spider shot at Grog and basically he had only half a heart left. So I thought it was horrible. So I really wanted to bring him back home with me so that he would be safe and heal, but he couldn't go through the portal. So I guess it's just impossible to do so. After all that, I realized that I really needed to upgrade my armor. And so I went mining for diamonds. I found this huge underwater cave and I swam about breathing with my doors <laughs> and found quite a few diamonds. I was running out of arrows really quickly. So sadly, I had to go and kill some peacocks and some birds to get some feathers because it was the only way I could get all these arrows. I know I could have used, you know, the skeleton spawner to make a skeleton farm, but I clearly didn't have time because Better Minecraft is a lot about exploring new terrain. It's not really about just staying where you are and farming. Well, at least that's what I think. 
From day 75 to 79, I went back mining in the caves. So I found this huge caves with some dripstone. I even found a mine shaft, so that was pretty good because I could get some extra name tags. And there were quite a few mobs, you know, with the size of the caves, it's not surprising. So I really had to be careful. And suddenly I saw this creeper who had like a huge green backpack or I don't know what he had behind him <laughs> but thankfully um he didn't explode because I didn't want to know what the explosion would do and finally when I had enough diamonds I went back up to the surface and made myself a full diamond armor as well as an enchanting table my first few enchants were protection four for my helmet as well as efficiency four for my axe I then ran out of levels, but my next enchantment would be Fortune 3. With my extra name tags, I named my peacock Pablo, one of my dragons Azur, and the other one Aer, which actually means air in Latin. I went back to the Everdon dimension to see Grog, who was doing all right, and I even was able to tame a cosmic fox, which was super fun, but then one of these poisonous spiders shot at Grog and he died. So truthfully, I did feel a little bit of emotion because Grog was just so cute. Look at this little face. I knew I could never forget him and that's why I tamed another frog and I named him Grog the Second. I needed more levels for enchanting and so I went to see in my quest book and saw that if I killed off two more skulk zombies I could get some more XP so that is what I did and I went to explore the deeper dark. I even found a few diamonds which I didn't mind so that I could mine them when I had fortune three and then in the cave below me was the warden and so this time I had some arrows so I shot and shot and shot at him until he died. I was so scared at one point he would just creep up behind me, but thankfully he didn't, so phew. <laughs> and I went to pick up the loot and I even got a nether star um, as a reward for killing him, so that was pretty cool. After placing my trophies on some shelves, I realized that I would need to get into the nether to get some blaze rods and nether warts. So I decided to take Azur and fly over, you know, somewhere a bit further off from my house so that maybe I would find a nether fortress there. I gave a little peck on Azur's cheek and went in. I landed in this creepy spooky biome, but sadly, I didn't see any nether fortresses. So I had to get back out of the nether back on Azure's back and just back home. As I had landed on my roof the night before, um, of course, I had to make my way back up to Azure, which was a little bit tricky, but I managed and it was all right. I flew back to the nether portal I had made to remove it, but this time I decided I would use the waystone to go super far from my house. I then went into the nether once I was there, but sadly, once again, except from eccentric biomes, I did not find the nether fortress. And so I continued on my travels until I found this village with some peacocks on the roofs of the houses. And I made my portal right next to a waystone. And when I went in, I was delighted to find a biome I knew, the Crimson Forest. And right next to it was a nether fortress, finally. And then this mosquito kept attacking me <laughs> and sucking up my blood, but that wasn't too much of a problem. I carefully made my way up. It was a bit tricky because this blaze kept shooting every time I jumped. He was like, psh, psh. <laughs> just throwing his fireballs at me. Uh, but finally, I managed to get out of my hole and I collected some nether warts and killed off my first blazes. 
I then looked around for some chests, which didn't have much in them, and I even found this glowstone biome, which was pretty cool. But anyway, it was time to get some blaze rods, and I went to a blaze spawner, and this crazy huge blaze, like what is that? <laughs> this crazy blaze just spawned, and I was really confused, so um, <laughs> I killed him as quickly as possible, because I knew he would do damage if ever he managed to touch me. When I returned to the overworld, a mosquito jumped at me, but he was quick to finish. And from days 87 to 88, I started brewing some potions. I quickly noticed that I didn't have any glowstone, at least I couldn't find any. So I went back to the nether to get some glowstone. And then I headed over once again to the blaze spawner to get plenty of blaze rods. So it was all going well until two mega blazes, that's how I'm gonna call them, spawn. So yeah, I did not feel very safe. So I carefully killed them from behind a wall and I finally had enough blaze rods for the ender dragon fight. Once the strength potions were done and the slow falling potions were done, I fed my fillets with some cows, but then I returned to the nether with all the gold I had and trust me I had quite a few stacks. And I gave these angry piglins some gold so that maybe they might trade some ender pearls. And I was truthfully not very worried because I might have had five or six stacks of gold, so yeah. I think I got around like 20 ender pearls, so I was gooder than good for the ender dragon fight for sure. Now, all that was left to do was get some more levels to enchant. And so, as we were indeed in Minecraft, I thought, why not go mining? And I actually really liked these few days because it was really relaxing. I was just in the caves mining for coal, redstone, iron. I was smelting the iron and the gold to get some XP. It was just a really chill moment. And I really, really felt like the peacefulness of Minecraft. I had managed to enchant the most of my armor, but then there was a blood moon and that was actually perfect because that meant I could get plenty of XP with all the mobs spawning. But yeah, it was a little bit tricky because it's true there were quite a few mobs spawning. Um, and at one point I actually wanted a skeleton to kill the creeper, you know, to get a disc. But it clearly didn't work out as you can see. But finally I got 30 levels and I was able to enchant my boots with protection 4. On day 94, I set off into the open on Azure's back to find the stronghold. At one point I threw an ender pearl to be sure we were going still in the right direction and to get it we landed in the water and I didn't think much of it and then I realized that Azure was sinking and sinking and he couldn't get back up and then he started taking damage and died. And it was horrible because it was like he was turning to ash in the water and he just disappeared. I was just left there the middle of the ocean, all alone, and I'd lost one of my greatest friends. I could hear Azure whispering to me that it was okay and that I had to go on. And so with this tiny strength, I made a boat and made my way over till I found the stronghold. I started off by defeating the enemies that were in my way. I then looted a few chests and quite enjoyed the fact that the stronghold was so different and made it way more interesting. And then I found the entrance to the end and I filled up the portal and I was in. First of all, I was amazed at how the sky had changed, it was all purple. But I did my best not to get distracted because it was time to destroy the crystal.
comments of you guys loving when I hit the dragon in Accelerated. So here you go, guys. It's a present for me. After being kicked into the air again, again, and again, the dragon was slowly running out of health. My strength potion was running out, so I tried shooting at it several times, but then it ran out, and I just had to cling on and just hope that it was not over. And with a few hits from my mighty axe, the dragon was no more. I collected the levels, but above all, I collected the egg. I was planning on hatching yet another dragon, but this time I wanted a fire dragon. So I placed the egg next to some lava, and soon enough, the egg was going to hatch a fire dragon. I did a bit of fishing to be able to tame the dragon, and then I saw this goblin that was just moving the egg around, and I was scared he would, you know, just make it fall in the lava, so I blocked off the lava, and then the dragon changed. So I don't really know what that dragon was, I think it was like, you know, the underground dragon, but I really wanted a fire dragon, and so I managed to turn the egg back into a fire dragon, and then, look who was born, a lovely baby female dragon that I called Phoenix. But then I realized a terrible mistake. Phoenix was underground, and she was going to grow at any moment, and she might easily suffocate in the rock. So I had to quickly make my way up, digging a large enough hole back to the surface for Phoenix and I to go through. Once we were safe at the surface, I spotted this gatekeeper house, so I went over and saw the gatekeeper was attacking some raccoons, so I got so scared he was going to attack my dragon, but they seemed to get along pretty well. While I was waiting for Phoenix to grow, I did quite a bit of fishing and hunting fish so that I could feed her and accelerate her growth. I also did some AFK in the gatekeeper's house with these friendly little ducks. On day 99, it was finally time to fly home. When I arrived back at base, I actually hatched some of the duck eggs and little baby Arnold the duck was born. Then the moment I dreaded came. I had to go up to Aer and tell him that Azir was not coming back. But Aer was just a dragon, and he didn't understand a word I said, and I could see he kept waiting for his friend to come back. I presented Phoenix to him, and soon enough, there was a baby dragon egg. I put the egg in some snow, and soon enough, a frosty dragon was born, and the lovely family was reunited. Well, well, Better Minecraft was for sure an incredible experience, so I really, really hope you guys enjoy the video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and tell me in the comments what you thought, of course. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in next week's video. Love you!